growing up, Robin was the guy, you know, I think for everybody. But for, I think, the generations after me, Nightwing has really become the definitive uh, Dick Grayson character that people relate to. Lauren Lester! And when I, when I do the Comic-Cons, every other person has a Nightwing. And, and it's the Batman animated series Nightwing. Nobody's wearing a mullet, but, but they're doing the rest of it. Mullets are out, but the rest of it is pretty cool. Things change. My coach in, in PE in high school, his son was doing commercials. And he said, you have a great look for commercials. Did you ever think of being, that you want to be an actor? And I said, yeah. So he introduced me to his son's agent and the rest is history. His, his, that agent had all the different departments, a commercial department, a TV department, a movie department, and a voiceover department. And I, I didn't know anything about voiceovers, but there was a department there and he started sending me on those jobs and I booked those jobs and that was just, it just took off from there. It's always hard when you're cast in something to know why they cast you. I think Lauren was probably one of the first people that we actually signed up like early on. He had it all. I mean, he was, uh, he was kind of exactly what we were looking for. Bruce knows exactly what he wants. To have somebody at the helm who, uh, you know, captain at the wheel, saying this is where we're going, this is what I want, I like working that way. The role of Robin was probably the most sought after uh, role in animation at the time. I really wanted this job because I was a huge, huge Batman fan. When I was growing up, I mean, the, the TV show with Adam West and Burt Ward, that was, that was my favorite two nights a week. Here it was a chance to be in the new Batman show and, and being Robin was great. That sounded great to me. I think I had about three auditions and had no idea if I'd gotten it or not. And then I came home and uh, there was a message from my agent on the answering machine. He said, could I, could I speak to the new voice of Robin? And I just, you know, I went through, through the ceiling. It was a great, great moment. He kind of just nailed it like right out of the gate. He was an, an adult, but he sounded really youthful. You know, he sounded definitely like, you know, a teenager without having to like pitch his voice down Leaving so soon, Boxy? Whenever we can, we always try to, you know, hire somebody who their actual speaking voice is the voice of the character, so they're not, like, putting on a cartoon voice. And he just naturally sounded that way. It was clear that they wanted to make a animated series that was in the same tone as the movie that had come out, the Michael Keaton film that had come out. So we knew it was dark. We knew it was very realistic, and the word they used was cinematic. They wanted cinematic acting, so we all knew, because all of us had done movies, we all knew exactly what they wanted, what they were going for. Had no idea really how dark and how different and interesting it was going to be. Had no way of knowing that when we were recording it. The entire cast was always there always there, the, certainly the series regulars. So it was like a, doing a play, kind of, you know, because we could work, work off of each other. And the seats were all in a, you know, in a semi-circle, and we, we were all present for the recording. So Kevin and I, when every show that we did, we did together. I had a great uh, working relationship with Lauren. He was part of that original family. Uh, but you know how this business is? You work with people for a couple of years or a few years, and you become like a family. And then when it's over, everyone goes off to other jobs. So I, you know, oddly enough, I haven't seen Lauren in many, many, many years. Um, and back in the early 90s, uh, we saw each other every week. He's, um, he's very good. He's a very good voice actor. He's very good at what he does. Batman, it's almost midnight. We have to do something. Robin, certainly in, in, the, uh, in the 1960s show, uh, was always kind of a gee whiz, gee willikers, you know, what are we gonna do, Batman? A lot of the episodes of the animated series where they did deal with the emotions of the characters, those are my favorites. And so there was a lot of, a, a lot of, a lot of drama happening between the two of them 
and uh, um, um, internally too. I mean, they went through a lot of lot of stuff in the, in that show. I've got to get away, away from him. When Dick Grayson is Robin, he's very frustrated because he thinks he's learned enough to be kind of an equal with Batman to um, make decisions the way Batman makes the decisions. And Batman has to keep telling him, you know, no, you're not ready, you're not ready. So a, a lot of the, 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 the role involved his frustration, which eventually boils to the, to, to, to the top. And he, he slugs Batman and he, he walks away and he becomes Nightwing. He'd had like a falling out with Batman at some point, so he was kind of, kind of a little bit more cynical, a little bit more bitter, a little bit tougher, a little bit less, you know, the, the wise cracking teenage sidekick anymore. And it was it was really fun to have, you know, to give Lauren, you know, a, a different take on the character to play. And of course, you know, he was totally up for the challenge and he loved doing it. I don't need a chaperone. I was really grateful when they when they uh, uh, continued the story with Nightwing. My favorite episode is an episode called Old Wounds, where I got to play both Robin and Nightwing. It was never really right. I mean, this isn't exactly a normal childhood. It's uh, Nightwing in the present talking about the past, and in the flashbacks you see Robin. So I got to play both of them, both incarnations. It's kind of fun to see the character evolve, both in, in, in terms of the writing and what, what Lauren brought to it. Nightwing is, is not as, as dark as the Dark Knight. As Nightwing, he still has a lot of sarcastic sense of humor the way he did as Robin, even though he's more mature now, he's Nightwing now, but he still has a lot of that sarcastic sense of humor that kind of lightens things up when the Dark Knight is just simply dark. Hey, it's a free rooftop, isn't it? Got to actually see a character age uh, before your eyes. He started as a teenager and he became a young adult and the same actor was able to do the same thing himself and have his character grow in his voice. The, the voice that I came up with for Robin is higher pitched than my, my regular voice. It sounds a lot like my regular speaking voice, but it's up here, you know, the energy is way up here. I think he's getting better. When I became Nightwing, uh, we worked very, hard on making it very different from Robin, but not sounding too much like Batman. So I took some of what Kevin was doing, because now Nightwing was moving toward being the next Batman, in essence. And so I lowered it and became more gravelly, but still had the essence of my voice as Robin, a kind of a lower, uh, more intense, darker sound. If you'll excuse me. Hi, Harley. Long time no see. Because this was kind of, in, in a way, a, a little bit of a, of a Batman the Animated Series reunion, because of course it's in the Batman the Animated Series, you know, universe visually, and I've got Kevin playing Batman. It would have been weird to bring anybody else in to play Nightwing other than, than Lauren. And so early on, I pretty much decided right out of the gate that I wanted to have Lauren come back as Nightwing. Lauren stepped right into the role, I think, like sliding into an old shoe. Uh, he was so versatile, so to hear him play the comedic timing that was needed for this piece, he really brought that to life. We've tried everything. The sonic disruptor barely phased him, and the biofeedback batarangs didn't do squat. To be able to go back with this film and do this all over again, it's, it's not something you really get to do in this business. Uh, you know, there are, there are, you know, very, very few franchises that continue on and on and on and where you get to go back and you get to play the characters again. I have nightmares like this. Nightwing is is really a, a, a mature man. You know, he was always kind of a, a, a teenager slash college student trying to struggle, trying to find himself, find his identity. He's a real grown-up in this in this film. It's a grown-up film. So that that's a great step forward for this character and I hope they continue to explore the character of Nightwing. People are, people are Nightwing fanatics. I think if you asked anybody at the time we were doing the show that we'd be talking about this 20 years later or 25 years later and people would still be talking about it with such uh, a passion, I don't think anybody would have said, 
that's the case. We knew we were making a terrific show and it was different, but to have something that's literally lasted decades and now two generations, that just blows me away. Yes! It's really an honor to be considered, you know, you know, one of the top Dick Grayson's uh, of all time, and I, I, I'm, I'm really, I'm really flattered and humbled about that. I mean, that's like the ultimate goal that you've created something that that's going to live forever. I'm really proud of the fact that um, that it really touched people. It's one thing to be in. Um, a film or some kind of work of entertainment where people say, I really like that, I really like that. But to have people come up and say, it, it, it meant so much to me, it really touched me, you have no idea what a huge part of my childhood this is. And th those lines that I'm saying, I, I hear from every other person who comes up at, at the Comic Cons and people I meet in various venues. They say, you just have no idea how much this meant to me as a kid or, or how this touched me. And uh, that's, you know, that's just, uh, you can't, you can't buy that. You can't buy that. That's fantastic. Very proud of that. Thank you.